Welcome to this Tobacco University video. Here I'm going to go over understanding plant hormones in a general sense, not getting into specifics, but providing with an idea of kind of the commonalities amongst all the plant hormones. Let's get into the understanding of plant hormones here. So first off, in general, plant hormones are regulators of almost all aspects of plant development and plant responses to their environment. They're active in very low concentrations, but have profound effects on the plant. What that means basically is that it doesn't take very much of any particular hormone to have a major impact on the plant that we see. Plant hormones are specifically regulated and controlled, which is very important simply because of the large impact they have on the plant growth and development. And this is for all stages. Everything from germination uh, to pollination, everything in between, and for all plants, not necessarily just your angiosperms. So hormones are important signal molecule. So just like in animals, uh, same thing that uh, hormones in plants are also very important and something not uh, to be kind of understood well, uh, something not to be taken for granted. Plant hormones act as dedicated signaling molecules. Plant hormones are synthesized by the plant and are transported some distances, at least one cell uh, diameter within the plant. So this is kind of that signaling molecule. They might be produced in one part of the plant, but might have their effect in another part. These hormones have important and very specific effects on the physiology, the growth and development in vivo, which is inside a living organism, of the plant. So it's because they're produced in one area, they're going to signal to other portions of the plant. Um, so this is very important for that, um, those cells to be able to signal uh, to one another within the organism to be able to get that plant noticed effect. Now the plant hormone cycle. So these are just a couple here, picked uh, picked at kind of as a random kind of graph here. Again, looking at specifics, there's going to be little differences that do occur, of course. But we're looking at basically the hormone level and uh, basically four stages of the plant. And we could see that certain ones are very active for the germination phase, and then the vegetative growth phase. They might be reduced, and then they might have peaks right before flowering, and then go down, back down again for the um, fruiting and ripening stages, where others might increase. So you can see that there's a lot of imply, a lot of flux that occurs during the plant growth cycle on what hormones are active when and in relation to what other hormones what ones might be active. Now the binding of hormones. So in a general sense, hormones act by binding to a specific receptor, remaining bound, and not being modified when acting. So we talked about earlier, talked about earlier that plant hormones have a profound effect on the plants. However, they're active in very small amounts. How is it possible for something in small amounts to have a large effect? Well, what's happening is the hormone is binding to a receptor. Here's our plant, here's our cell, plant cell, because there's a cell wall, here's our receptor binding, and then there's a lot of relay molecules. A transduction pathway occurs. You can think of this as if we had a pyramid of dominoes and we knock one domino over, we're having this kind of transduction pathway uh, that is resulting in activation potentially of many different pathways. That's going to result in a response, an activation of cellular responses both in this cell as well as potentially neighboring cells. And that one hormone, that one binding to one receptor, can cause this amplified effect and response. And this is why they can be active even though their concentrations might be very, very small. Now, when we're applying uh, hormones to plants, this is something that's commonly done. For example, when we're cloning, adding rooting hormone. Spraying hormones in the plant can be referred to as a gyrinous addition, where we're applying things to the outside of the plant. Here we see a plant recently potentially sprayed with water that is being added uh, extracellularly. The rates applied often do not match the plant-produced levels, as the goal is to better understand plant response curves at different levels. So just because the plant produces hormones at a certain level or concentration, growers may be applying them at increased levels to help in increase the rate of that response, which may happen in some cases, but remember, if we overadd certain hormones, it can actually have negative effects. Studies can also investigate how the same concentration of a hormone may impact different species, tissues, and development stages with the uh, intention of better understanding hormone impacts. The same hormone applied at different stages of growth could have potentially very different effects, as we saw with that graph earlier. 
Now, there's some challenges with our plant hormones. So most hormones can be synthesized and degraded by many roots, making them a challenge to study. It's not just applying hormone X and get response, as you would potentially with, say, a fertilizer. Major problem when you apply them on the extracellular basis uh, in androgynous levels, or the levels within the plant experiments, are difficult to establish causative links between the hormone and the response in vivo. And just as a reminder, in vivo is in the living organism, and in vitro is in glass. So in vivo is actually the organism. Uh, in vitro might be, for example, tissue culture, as we see here. Just because we see it in tissue culture doesn't necessarily mean that may translate to kind of uh, out in a field application. Some studies utilize inhibitors or mutants, which are called knockouts, where they take that gene and they knock it out. They uh, prevent the plant from making it. And this aids in the study of certain hormones impacts on plant development. What if that hormone was missing? How would that impact the plant? So again, this is just kind of a general overview of plant hormones, but you can see why they're so hard to study, uh, simply because of all the interactive effects that might occur.